Okay, uh, thanks very much. Um, yeah, so I'll tell you about uh, spin glasses and I'll try to convince you that they're interesting and have very many fascinating properties. Uh, and I'll try to mention a little bit about algorithms, which is I've personally been thinking about. Uh, um, so let's start with a uh, combinatorial uh, question called the Dean's problem. So in the Dean's problem, I have N students and I'd like to assign them to two dorms, which I'll call plus and minus. And uh, each student pair is either friends or enemies, so they either want to be in the same dorm or they don't want to be in the same dorm. And uh, our goal is to, um... <laughs> okay, anyways. Okay, our, our goal is to uh, satisfy as many of these preferences as possible. Uh, so, of course, if we take a random assignment, we'll get half of the preferences satisfied, and we're that's not so interesting, but we're interested in the deviations that we can get. Um, if you draw the friendship graph, uh, this is almost the same as looking for something like a max cut. Uh, and anyway, it turns out that deviations have order into the three halves, and we'd like to understand uh, this kind of very precisely. So um, let me center and rescale a little bit. Maybe that's better. Uh, so we're going to uh, rescale so that um, we just have this random quadratic function hn, and um, it's a random, it's a quadratic function with iid plus minus coefficients. And uh, this problem is equivalent to just um, maximizing this quadratic function on the Boolean cube. Uh, the equivalence is kind of just completely direct. Um, each student is assigned to plus or minus, so. A solution is a length and vector of pluses and minuses, and these coefficients jij of my function tell me whether those students are friends or enemies. So what I'd like to do is understand the extreme values of this function. Uh, so this is the SK model, the Sherrington Kirkpatrick model at um, positive uh, at zero temperature. And more generally, at uh, finite temperature, you can write down the same kind of object, uh, which is the free energy. So instead of taking a maximum, which is kind of a very hard threshold, uh, you take e to the beta h, you add these up, you take a log, and this is kind of a smoothed out maximum. So as be when beta is large, you, you kind of get the maximum and the limit, but now you can do calculus and stuff, so it's a bit nicer. So um, uh, the way that one understands the solution to the Dean's problem is to understand these uh, free energies at general beta. And to do this, it turns out that you need to understand the random probability distributions uh, coming from this Hamiltonian H. So the probability in this uh, measure mu beta of a configuration sigma is proportional to e to the beta hn sigma. So, um, so that's the Sherrington Kirkpatrick model. And we'd like to understand it kind of at a general beta, and in particular for, for large beta, which is low temperature. Uh, let me point out that there's two levels of randomness here. So we we get random coefficients j that gives us a random distribution on the cube, and then we'd maybe like to understand the properties of this distribution. So uh, that's something that's um, that makes this challenging. Okay, um, so this is a bit different from the thermomagnetic easing model, which uh, some people might be more familiar with. So in the thermomagnetic easing model, um, one has positive deterministic couplings, maybe on the edges of a graph in, in the case I'm talking about, we just have a complete graph. Uh, and and you know, the, the energy is just the sum of pairwise products of adjacent spins. Uh, so in this model, um, the qualitative description of what happens is a bit simpler because when you increase beta, you just want nearby spins to align. So there's kind of at a high level just a tension between energy and entropy. So if you make beta very large, you'll kind of concentrate on very ordered states, and you expect that there's usually some phase transition between uh, long-range order and long-range disorder. Uh, whereas in a spin glass model, we have these random coefficients. Uh, even if we're looking at the maximum value of our function, it's, it's very non-trivial because we can't satisfy all the preferences. Okay, uh, so let me just mention some uh, connections before I start telling you um, results uh, about this uh, model. So it's, it was introduced by Sherrington and Kirkpatrick and they were interested in uh, mag 
genetic uh, models with some unusual properties where um, the interaction between two atoms is kind of a rap rapidly oscillating function of their distance. And so um, you model the interaction as random. Uh, this is a mean field model because we're not thinking about any three-dimensional structure of you know, real physical space. Uh, so um, one uh, relation to uh, combinatorial problem is um, so as as we kind of as you may be able to see um, the Dean's problem I discussed was very much almost the same as Max cut on an Erdős Renyi random graph, edge probability one half. But if you look at say Max cut on a sparser graph with edge with average degree lambda tending to infinity maybe very slowly, uh, it'll still be described in uh, by this model in the sense that the um, the main uh, interesting term is uh, given by the same uh, limiting offset. Uh, and there's similar stories for uh, things like max set. Um, another thing I want to mention is that there are a lot of uh, applications for the finite beta model as well and things like this. Uh, so um, probably the um, crown jewel uh, result on mean field spin glasses is the Prezi formula. So it tells us uh, what the free energy is. And um, in particular, it uh, tells you the answer to the Dean's problem by taking beta large. Uh, it's a surprisingly complicated formula for such a simple sounding problem. I'll just uh, flash it briefly. Uh, so you, you choose a increasing function gamma from 0, 1 to 0, 1. So this is the CDF of a probability measure. Then you define this um, stochastic hamilton jacobi uh, PDE, you solve it backwards in time, you get a number, then you minimize this number over your choice of increasing function. So somehow this is a variational formula. It, it, you can get numerics from it, but it's, you know, it's a bit complicated. Um, so now let me uh, say a few um, interesting um, qualitative properties uh, to convince you that something interesting is happening. Um, so the first uh, interesting qualitative property is ultramatricity. Uh, it's kind of implicit in the Prezi formula. And it says the following. It says, uh, I'm going to generate this random probability distribution on the Q. And I'm going to take, uh, let's say, three independent samples from it. Then um, with high probability, modulo some caveats I'll sweep under the rug, uh, these three points will approximately obey the ultrametric triangle inequality. Um, so what this kind of means if, if let's say you take a larger constant number of samples, like a thousand, they'll, they'll be arranged into a, a finite approximately ultrametric space. Um, and there's a transition. Is this ultrametric space kind of trivial? So the distance between these points are all the same, or is it non-trivial? Uh, this is called replica symmetry breaking in this case. Uh, and you can read off these properties uh, from the variational problem. So at, at low temperature for large beta, uh, you'll kind of have a many layered hierarchy of uh, nested uh, clusters because that's what happens for a non-trivial ultrametric space. Um, so, so here the picture is that these, um, these leaves at the bottom, these are the actual points in your Gibbs measure, these are points on the cube, and these uh, higher layers are just indicating levels of uh, clusters. Um, some other uh, very interesting uh, phenomena here uh, can be uh, seen by looking at the landscape. So in the model I've described, the Sherrington Kirkpatrick model, we have a random disorder matrix. Um, <coughs> but we could just as well define a P tensor analog uh, with n to the P random coefficients. We'll have a degree P polynomial. And uh, this is also interesting on the sphere. Uh, so if we had a random quadratic on the sphere, we'd just be looking at the eigenvalues. And uh, While well, that's interesting, it's not what we want to be doing, but if we look at a random cubic on the sphere, it's going to be uh, very complicated. And one can show that it has things like exponentially many critical points, exponentially many local optima, and um, exponentially large mixing times at low temperature. Uh, a last uh, surprising uh, phenomenon I want to highlight is called uh, chaos. And it says the following. Um, let's say I take two uh, problem instances, which are very correlated. So I have two uh, Dean's problems. And if 
if uh, Alice and Bob are friends in the first, then they are 99% likely to be friends also in the second. Um, so we have these two related problems and we can ask how similar the corresponding um, Gibbs measures are on the cube. And uh, a consequence of uh, disorder chaos is that uh, they're significantly different. So if you look at the transportation distance uh, between these two Gibbs measures at a low temperature, beta larger than one, then the transportation distance is macroscopically large for any epsilon greater than zero and kind of uh, it doesn't go to zero as epsilon goes to zero. Um, and so the square root n scaling is just the, the norms of all the vectors involved because we're on the cube and n dimension. So this is saying I change my uh, disorder j's by 1% and I've really moved my, my probability distribution a lot. Um, uh, I'll mention a result of mine. Uh, we showed that at high temperature um, and uh, Gaussian couplings, it shouldn't make a difference. Um, this is not true and there is some kind of uh, continuity. So of course, everything is sort of continuous, but the question is, how does the continuity uh, scale with the dimension? Does it kind of degenerate or not? And uh, we showed that at high temperature, it doesn't. Uh, and we uh, proved this by an algorithm. Uh, we gave an explicit sampling algorithm to sample from this random probability distribution, and uh, our algorithm depended stably on the disorder. So this was kind of a consequence. Uh, okay, let me finish by just mentioning uh, a few other problems in this kind of uh, corner of the world. Um, so there are quite a few uh, problems that are supposed to behave similarly, where um, some things are known, but, but less is known. Uh, so one is uh, problems like max cut and max set on sparse random graphs. So I mentioned that if you have an area training random graph of diverging average degree, uh, you'll kind of have a similar behavior in some sense. But if you have, say, a three regular graph, then it's kind of not known. Uh, another model that uh, is uh, very related is the random perceptron model, where your Hamiltonian is a sum of uh, random one-dimensional functions. Uh, and there's also, uh, of course, the, the lattice model. This is called the Edwards-Anderson model, and the LLS is known here. Um, there's also a lot of interesting questions about dynamical behavior, uh, recent progress on rapid mixing of labor dynamics. And uh, I'll uh, finally mention uh, something I've been uh, very interested in, um, which is algorithms for maximizing these functions. So the Parisi formula tells you what is the optimal possible solution to the Dean's problem, but it, it's not constructive, so it doesn't tell you if there's any reasonable way to find this, uh, this good uh, allocation of students to dorms. And um, we've found some exact thresholds for uh, algorithms which are required to, again, depend stably on the disorder, and. Um, these proofs are related to ultramatricity. Uh, I'll talk about them here in 19 hours if anyone's interested. Uh, thanks very much, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, you mentioned beta greater than one and beta less than one uh, in your previous slide here. Yeah. Uh, what should happen when beta equals one? Uh, I'm really not sure. There's no obvious conjecture if it's like a low temperature or a high temperature case, or is it something else? Uh, In your space transition. Yeah, I, 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 I have no idea. <laughs> was there another? So I was going to ask: so Are some of these problems NP hard? Uh, yeah, these problems are NP hard in the worst case. Okay. In the the random case and the NP harder. I mean, your algorithms. Do they use do they use the Parisi formula, or roughly speaking, I, or is there something yeah. independent of that? You can, you can... I, so, so this uh, sampling algorithm doesn't use the Parisi formula at all. Actually, um, it uses something called stochastic localization. That, um, that's in the high temperature. Regime. Yeah, that's for high temperature. So, can you do something in the low temperature regime also? I, so. Um, so at low temperature, if you want to sample, then um, this uh, first result here kind of tells you you can't do so in a stable way. You can't so get the, you can't you, you might be able to get the energy, but you can't get the you can't get the the, the graph state itself, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in these last uh, results I mentioned, uh, we were just trying to optimize, and um, indeed, so so for the if you want to um, reach the prezi 
uh, value, you, you probably need to use the Prezi formula somewhere. Um, kind of what happens is that the Prezi formula is a Hamilton Jacobi equation. So it corresponds to some stochastic control problem. And you can take an optimal uh, control in that stochastic control problem and kind of feed it into your algorithm. So your algorithm will kind of be simulating some stochastic control in some sense. Yeah, that's roughly what's happening. What about the fee spin models? Uh, can you do the same for them? Uh, the rest came up? Uh, yeah, the um, the algorithm thresholds uh, for optimization, it's all it works the same way for them. Uh, for for the sampling results I mentioned, uh, we're uh, working on it uh, right now. Um, it seems that it should work for uh, high temperature, but maybe not all the way to criticality. And the, in the one RSV regime, is it? Easier than the full RSV. Um, so basically, this uh, theorem by Chatterjee applies whenever replica symmetry is broken. So if you want your sampling algorithm to be stable, you can kind of only do anything when you have replica symmetry. Um, I mean, that doesn't imply that uh, other types of things won't work. Maybe Glover dynamics can still mix in polynomial time, but. Thank you.